So again, let me introduce myself. My name is Wojciech Pazdur, and I am the lead designer of uh, Get Even project that I will try to cover today uh, mostly about the technical aspects of the game, because uh, as far as I know, we are at technology track. So first, uh, let's uh, see some teaser of the game, the teaser that has been released some time ago, but it's a good introduction to what I will be talking later. Thank you very much. The interesting thing about the teaser is that uh, this teaser has been made uh, by the Better Reality Company from Krakow, the guys who are here just on the opposite side of the wall here, and the beautiful lady that you have seen on the teaser, as far as I know, is also there with a little bit more better makeup. So if you want some autograph from, from the creators of the teaser or stuff like this, you can go there. And uh, moving to the Get Even itself, <clears throat> I will I will do some some presentation about the game itself shortly and then about the technology of 3D scanning we are using a little bit more. The title of the presentation is the real world versus the virtual one uh, because the questioning questioning the reality and the let's say conflict between the real world and virtual worlds is the essence of the get even. The core messages of, uh, of the game. Uh, I mean, why we are doing the game. What we want to bring to the table with Get Even. There is a couple of, uh, let's say, core messages or core fantasies behind the uh, game that we wanted to include in, uh, inside. Uh, the first message is uh, that we would like to remove the artificial barrier between single player and multiplayer. Uh, gameplay in action game. I will not cover this uh, topic so much because uh, it's a little bit too, too early and, and there is not enough time uh, how and why we are exactly opposite, uh, approaching this, but the, the, it's important to know that the game uh, plays uh, in, in one game mode. There is no separation for single player and multiplayer gameplay. It's like, like one combined game mode, like in the journey or like in the Demon Souls, something like this. <clears throat> Second, much more important uh, core messages uh, looking from, from what we will be covering later is that we would like to present the story 
about exploration of memories of other people, meaning entering the virtual world that are being recreated inside the virtual uh, machinery. The concept uh, that has been utilized by movies like The Butterfly Effect, like Inception, uh, like the source code, uh, the games like To The Moon, it's, uh, it's uh, also the core essence of, uh, of Get Even. The third message, the one that we will be focusing mostly today, <coughs> is that we would like to create a 3D game that looks exactly like the real world and not try to mimic the action movie. It's important because uh, Get Even uh, has much more of indie spirit uh, than our previous titles. It doesn't try to uh, be, let's say, uh, the alternative for, for epic blockbuster or AAA titles. It just tried to, to create or, or fill some, some smaller niche into the indie game market and tr also visuals, uh, <coughs> attempting to, to, to create something uh, that is much closer to the reality than to the Hollywood or, or movie stylization. And the fourth message, the one that, that, that is very hot subject recently is <coughs> that we are creating the game that is going to be, or we would like to make it uh, ultimate virtual reality experience. Meaning that the next year when we would like to release Get Even is also the year when the Oculus and Morpheus devices are going to probably uh, appear as the consumer devices and you would like to be uh, in touch with, uh, with release date of Get Even and to, to deliver one of the first games that truly utilizes potential of virtual reality devices. And we are going with this so deep that we are building the whole game around, around the idea of virtual reality because inside the game we have more than one reality and each of this reality can be explored with help of some devices like the one presented here that is, uh, let's say, the much, much cooler looking version of, of Morpheus or Oculus or any other, other stuff that you can expect to appear in the future. <coughs> Just to, to, to expand it a little bit, uh, some of the ideas uh, pointed out why and what we are trying to include into Get Even to, to make it a little bit more uh, understood regarding why we are also using the 3D scanning and the technology that will be cover, uh, covered in the moment. First, as mentioned, we wanted to create uh, a little bit detour from mainstream uh, first-person action genre. As you, as you have seen in the uh, teaser, we got some weapons, we got some soldiers, and we got some unusual looking uh, from, from the perspective of other shooters, some unusual looking environments, some very detailed and very realistic, but also not epic environment. This is, this is what we are trying to do with Get Even, create the game that is more like virtual reality, that is more like uh, at, attend into the real life simu simulation or attempts that may happen in the real life than the adventure that you could uh, live if you, if you have been a hero of the action movie. The other things uh, interesting or, or important about Get Even that it's going to be quite a dark story it's, it's going to be a little bit horror or thriller themed and it's uh, gonna be telling uh, the events of two people. We, we, it's also element of uh, the touring from the mainstream. We are not making game about conflict of organization. We are not making the game about conflict of nations. There will be no armies. Uh, probably there will be no police forces uh, and, and stuff like this. There will be just two humans that really wants to get even, and this is why the, name, the game is named Gate Even, because Gate Even means to settle the score or to take a revenge. We also want to use and to tell the story mostly by gameplay and by interaction, to get rid, again, of, of the cinematic feelings, to get rid of the cutscenes, uh, to be able to use virtual reality where, where cutscenes are not the, the best, uh, let's say, storytelling tool. In, in Get Even, you will be able to explore all the scenes, including the storytelling ones, and, uh, and, and to see them from different angles. So, something like you could imagine that you are a player into the movie, you are not watching the movie. And 
of course, the important things about uh, about the get even is that we are utilizing the virtual reality and the next gen tech uh, for a couple of reasons. First, because it is the song of the future, uh, meaning that we have a next gen consoles on the market already. Uh, the requirements of, of the PC, requirements of the hardware go a little bit higher than, than it was for, for the last years when every game had to fit the standards of the previous generation of consoles. So for now, it's easy to assume that we can use much more sophisticated visuals, we can uh, use much more efficiently different uh, reality, let's say, elements in the game, uh, mostly uh, talking about the visuals, and uh, in this case, uh, we are trying to connect it with uh, uh, trying to connect it to the to the virtual reality systems uh, that we'll be using both outside of the game, like you will be able to play the game with Oculus or Morpheus, and inside the game because the virtual reality helmet or virtual reality device will be also the tool for traveling into deeper and deeper levels of reality, like in the Inception movie. And. The key question that uh, Get Even is going to ask all the time is the question, what is real? Uh, try to imagine the story that, that you are waking up in some closet uh, uh, space, like, for example, in the Soul movie or in the Cube movie or in the Source Code movie. You, you don't know where you are. You don't know exactly why you are here. You need to find out who put you there and at some moment you need to realize if the world you are in is, uh, is the real. The same as, uh, as Neo in Matrix. At some moment you will realize that you may live not in the live world and maybe you need to find a way to the other world. Maybe to the real world or maybe to the other virtual world. This is what uh, Get Even will be talking about. <coughs> so uh, to support these questions uh, we are not using uh, typical fantasy setting, we rather want to mix strong reality setting with some sort of fantasy elements. And fantasy and science fiction elements will be just slight addition to, to help us explore the world, to help us in moving from one world to another. But basically, uh, all, all the core elements of the, of the get even like mixing rhyme with fantasy elements like blading, AI, artificial intelligence with human control and enemies that combine real world scenarios with uh, CG, computer graphics, traveling between different levels of reality. It's all, uh, it's all uh, the, 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 let's say the way of telling the story which is going to ask you all the time the question, what is real? Every element you will see in the game you will need to judge if it is a reality or if it is artificial or how, how it affects your, your story and your, what you should do about this. And now we are moving to the, to the, the I guess, the funniest part or, or, or the most uh, spectacular part of this, uh, of this uh, visuals or of this setting, which is using the 3D scanning uh, to bring up the uh, real uh, location into the game engine. Of course the 3D scanning, like the technique of acquisition of, of the real objects and transforming them into the 3D model inside the computer, it's nothing new. It has been done for years and, uh, and basically uh, I was interested in this technique like, uh, for let's say 12 or 14 years. Uh, in, in 14 years ago I was uh, making a photo with analog camera and I were using different routines uh, because I was a graphic artist then before I became the designer. I was trying to recreate the real world objects using the different photographing techniques, using the laser scanning and so on. It was more like play then because in the past no real-time applications, no real-time hardware could handle this, this amount of data uh, measuring in, in number of polygons, measuring in number of pixels, in texture density to create the proper look. This is why even if scanning was possible 10 years ago, most of the games never used it, uh, most of the real-time applications never used it because it was too heavy and too complicated in processing. But right now, with uh, approaching the next-gen uh, next gen era of consoles, next-gen era of PC, we are finally capable to use 
hundreds of megabytes of textures or even gigabytes of textures. We are capable of use of millions of polygons per one real-time scenes. And this is the good moment where 3D scanning uh, could uh, enter the real-time application and where it could enter the game world. It's interesting because a uh, couple of years ago we tried to put some, uh, some of the scanned elements inside our previous games like Deadfall Adventures or Painkiller, but there was so much of difference between the graphics that has been made by hand with a limitation of the current gen consoles and so much of difference uh, of, of the scanning <laughs> which simply doesn't match the, 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 the visuals of, of handmade models. Right now, when we can focus mostly on scanning and use just some elements of, of uh, handmade models, because we still need to, it, it fits perfectly and everything looks very realistic. But, but uh, more, uh, more funny thing is that we didn't expect that people will see scanning as so much as next-gen visuals. Uh, after releasing our teaser, there was a couple of voices around different websites saying that this is how the real next-gen visuals should look like. And I only fully agree with this, because I believe the next-gen means that you can use any kind of visuals, finally. You can use hand-modeled models, you can use hand-painted pictures, you can use tune animation, and you can use 3D scans. And this, this is something great what uh, the next-gen era brought to the, uh, brought to the market. But we, we, we have gone with, uh, with announcement of our project in the right moment because it was just after people uh, have bought the new consoles like PlayStation 4 and Xbox One and then re they realized that the games that they are playing are looking exactly the same as the games from the previous generation. They just have higher resolution and a little bit more smoother models and nothing has changed. I mean, Killzone 4 looks almost like Killzone 3 with higher resolution. Uh, new Call of Duty looks like previous Call of Duty with higher resolution, so people expected that uh, the next uh, era of visuals with, uh, will change something very significant inside the existing models of making the game, but it didn't change so much. The models are more accurate, the textures are higher resolution, and the game looks very similarly, but I believe the next-gen visuals is uh, delivering something that looks different, and different can mean very different things like using hand-painted uh, characters, like using tune animations, and like using photorealism and, and 3D scans. So why we are using 3D scanning? There's a couple of reasons, and uh, the one is photorealism. Photorealism meaning that stuff looks exactly like, like in the real world. Uh, of course, it's, uh, it's very important because for, for many years, we have been fed with promises that with this game or with this generation of hardware, we will have the uh, visuals that looks exactly like the real world. I remember when I was uh, buying first game on Amiga like 20 years ago, and they were using digitized uh, photos in, in Mortal Kombat or Pit Fighter or st uh, stuff like this. Then the sellers were telling me, you know, this game looks like the real world or this game looks like the, like the movie. Of course, right now we can only laugh at this, but I believe 3D scanning is, is uh, the first possibility, combined with uh, different rendering techniques and post-processing techniques and lighting techniques that can be used in uh, real time finally. It's the first moment where we can truly tell about the photorealism. The other reason which is important specifically for us and for Get Even, then using this kind of visuals we can play with reality better. In example, like in the teaser, we can mix the real-time uh, in-engine uh, screens or shots with footage that is uh, filmed with ordinary camera. And we will be using this in-game. For some parts of the game, we will be used recorded movies of the same location that we are scanning. And we will be doing mixing between them because sometimes it's better or easier or cheaper or simply it looks more cool when you have something filmed with camera. And sometimes, especially in the in very interactive parts, is of course much better to, to have it fully interactive. So playing with reality in scanning is of course uh, a, good, uh, a good idea and <coughs> this is what we are focused on. But also something what is specific for Get Even is the uglier the better. Get Even is the dark story. It's kind of horror. 
uh, you are not visiting the beautiful or twisted places like, like the room here. You will be rather exploring the dark corridors, you will be exploring the deep holes, you will be exploring something what we are calling the modern post-apocalyptic scenarios, meaning we are finding the scenarios also here on Silesia in Poland uh, that looks like, uh, like scenarios from the Stalker or from the Fallout, because we have a lot of them. Uh, fortunately for, for us, they didn't have been completely dismounted. And we are putting them into the game because they perfectly fit the, the dark atmosphere of the game and, and they are simply interesting. We want to uh, tell you, tell the player, what if you could explore the place that you are normally afraid of entering in, but the, the places which are close to, your, uh, to the place where you live. So, so the idea is that you will in Krakow, if you live in Warsaw, if you live in Berlin, uh, if you live in Kiev, if you live in Prague, if you just start walking in front of you and you will walk like 10 kilometers, you will find some abandoned, ruined places that some bad happenings may, uh, may take place there. Like there can be drug dealers, there can be uh, some uh, human trade going on, they, they can be some uh, meetings for criminals and so on. They kidnapped people can be brought there. And we, we are showing the and allowing you to explore the places that you will be not uh, brave enough to explore in your early life or most of us are not brave enough to, to enter uh, this, uh, these places. We are, we have to, so I hope you will appreciate it uh, later. But, uh, of course, uh, there is a problem or there is an issue of blending the scans with classic CG, with classic uh, computer-generated graphics. <laughs> Why is this important and what is this problem? The question that we are being asked often is uh, why you are not scanning everything? Technology allows you to, and of course, with scanning, we can scan almost everything. But look at this helmet that the guy has on, on, on his head. So the, the, the guy is scanned, this is my head actually, but the helmet, it would be too expensive to create this helmet uh, by hand, model if with plastic or metal, and then scan it. It makes no sense. If there is some fantasy element in the game, then it's usually better to model it by hand and to combine it as, with, with scanned uh, other elements of the game. This is a very uh, obvious example, but there are less obvious examples, like for example, well, weapon models. Weapon model has to be very accurate and metal weapon models uh, is not what you exactly see on the screen. On the screen you see combined, uh, let's say, object that in reality is built with like 100 different elements. And to scan off all these elements to make them movable and animated is again a little bit too expensive or, or, may, or may simply have not sense. So, for example, for weapon models, the elements that, ha that are very technical, very precise, and has a lot of moving elements, it's actually a, a better level of accuracy or better level of flexibility in animation when you model in model day by hand. So some things also better not to look real uh, because there are also issues with scanning specific surfaces or specific objects I will talk uh, uh, about this a little bit later on the other slide. So <coughs> what techniques we can use for, for the 3D scanning? Uh, basically, uh, I, I wrote here for real-time usage because uh, if you will do some, some Google research or, or you will simply uh, ask with people who are, have been working with scans for years, there, there is more of scanning methods, uh, but for, for our usage, the, the, the only uh, two that makes any sense is the photogrammetry and the laser scanners. Laser scanners are actually less important or, or, uh, or they are not being used at some huge scale because laser scanners are not delivering us so high level of uh, detail in textures. And because the game uh, we are making is a first person action game. I mean, you are walking around the environment, you can stick your nose to the wall. So, so the key for us is to have as detailed textures as possible. And the better method for acquiring the very detailed texture is photogrammetry. Photogrammetry means that we are making a hundreds of photos of the object 
sometimes thousands of photos of the objects. And using different software, different uh, routines, sometimes very automatic, sometimes half automatic, sometimes even by hand, we are uh, recreating the clouds of points that represents the 3D uh, space of the objects. And we are uh, recreating the maps of pixels, which finally transforms into the textures. And so photogrammetry is something what everybody can try on his own, because actually there is a lot of software that, that can process the photogrammetrical data, the Photoscan, the Autodex free software, uh, and a couple of others. If you only have some good camera and, and some will to try, you can try how to make photogrammetrical free objects. The only problem is that uh, technolo technology is quite easy to use now, but uh, to get a stable objects, to uh, stable effects, to, to create something what is effective from uh, let's say production point of view, it's much harder. It requires a lot of experiments, a lot of know-how, a lot of routines, a lot of other software that has been used in the meantime uh, to, uh, to transform the photogrammetrical data into the real-time 3D objects. So, important thing is that uh, there are different cases of scanning or different uh, types of objects of scenes. Some of them are better uh, let's say, suit of, of photogrammetry or of, of laser scanning, some of them are not very good. So what, what I have listed here is, is the best cases in scanning. What objects are the easiest to scan or what objects are the, let's say, the, the, the best subject of scanning? So first, not so huge environmental object. Why environmental? Because by environmental, we usually mean not moving object. Scanning the human or scanning the animal is harder. Of course, it's possible, but it requires either more of hardware or more of skills or, or, or a better approach. And uh, environmental object, meaning static objects, are easier because they simply not move. You can spend as much time walking around this with scanner or with camera, taking as many photos as you want, and, and uh, not so huge. Because with huge objects, there appears the, the problem of uh, amount of data or, or reachability of the object. You have a tall building, you got a problem to uh, get to the top of it if you want to scan it in whole. So the, the best object is the, the ones w which you can simply enclose with like 50 or 100 of photos. If you can make easily 100 of photos that shows exactly every detail of object and they overlap in huge part one with the other, I mean one photo with the other, then this is a good subject. If you have to scan the whole room or the whole building, you sometimes need to combine it with different parts of, of scanning elements or you need to uh, gather a lot of data, either laser uh, scanned data or photogrammetrical data, and then there is simply a problem with processing so much of data because uh, it can be count not in gigabytes, but even in terabytes uh, of data to be, uh, to be processed. The other uh, good things, if you approach the scan, is that, that uh, surfaces should be matte and contrast. If you have something which is shiny, which have a lot of light reflection, then you got a problem because uh, whenever you walk around this object or whenever you change the position of the scanner or camera, it uh, gathers different look of the objects because the reflections uh, or, or specular uh, on the objects is moving together with you or together with, uh, with your camera. So shiny objects uh, generate a lot of errors that has to be corrected somehow. And you can try to, of course, uh, let's say, uh, fight against this. For example, you can uh, take shiny objects and cover it with some powder. So it, it, it will retain its color and shape, but it, it won't be too shiny. So for example, if you got a car that, is, uh, that uh, just uh, left the, the washing station and is very clean and shiny, this is bad for scanning. But if this car is standing on your parking for let's say two months and it is covered with dust, it's much better for scanning. Something like this. And contrast surfaces. Uh, because uh, most of the uh, scanning uh, technologies, I, I, I guess every scanning technology bases on fi finding the difference between different uh, elements of the picture on bef bet between different samples that has been taken, for example, with laser. So if you get a uh, surface which is very 
plane which has no details, uh, which is simply solid color, it can be much harder to find, uh, to find the uh, proper or to recreate the proper shape, shape of this uh, Russian. The, another thing is that organics and convex shapes organic because uh, the scanning techniques always bring some artifacts, always there is some kind of uh, non-accurate data. What results in the, uh, in the elements of, let's say, imprecision? So the hardest object to scan are the very accurate objects. Like, for example, you have complicated weapon model, or you have complicated machinery, or you have compli complicated watch. Because of inaccuracy of scanner, it, there will be always some glitches. But from the other point of view, if you get this rock, like you have uh, on this picture, it doesn't matter so much if it is a little bit skewed at some moment or it, it's some of the leaves or it's some, some part of the stones is not 100% is not accurate like, like in, the, uh, in, the, in the reality. It just has to look very real. It doesn't have to be very accurate. So this is about organic shapes and convex shapes, meaning that the object that has holes inside are always harder to scan because you either need to get into this hole or sometimes the hole is too small to, to put the scanner inside. So usually if you have some objects that are drilled or that have uh, some holes, it's, uh, there is always need to correct them after scanning or, or to not include the hole as the part of the scan. The outdoor scenes are better for scanning uh, because uh, of lighting. Simply uh, the best case of uh, scanning scenario is when you have a very ambient light, when there is not so much of strong shadows, where there is not so much of strong light reflection. So the cloudy day is the best case for, for scanning because you then never have any, uh, any visible shadows, never have any visible strong reflection, and the lighting is stable. Sometimes scanning takes several hours. So if you have sun on, on uh, on the, hair, on the sky, the sun is moving, it's changing its color, and so on. So if you spend more time on scanning, then during your scanning, the lightning condition can change. Uh, so it's better to have cloudy sky and to scan, uh, scan it all with almost all similar amount of, uh, intensi uh, amount of light or intensity of light. And in the indoor scenes, of course, it's also possible, but in the indoor scene, you need to put, usually you need to put some light sources, like this lamp here. And these light sources will bring some mess into, into your scanning situation because they will generate some reflection and they will generate some glow or their appearance on the, uh, on the scanned map or scanned textures or scanned waters will depend on, on what kind of light source it is. Another thing is that weakly saturated colors are generally better because at at moment of uh, scanning, you are also acquiring the texture. I mean, this is this idea of mostly photogrammetry, but also laser scanning bases usually on scanning the uh, both uh, the shape, the model, the mesh, and and the uh, the texture. So, uh, saturated colors are always problem with uh, with CG, uh, CG with computer graphics, uh, and. Uh, most of the textures, if you create texture by hand, are better if they are not saturated because they, they bring a lot of problems to rendering. So first, because of consistency, second, because of easiness of use of the scans, it's better to have uh, not so saturated colors. And the medium brightness, because if it is too dark, then you will lose some details, and if it is too light, you usually also use some uh, details uh, tending to overbrighting the, the pictures or, or underbrighting the pictures. And there are also the worst cases, things that I, I mentioned before. So the shiny objects, uh, this is one of the extreme examples when, uh, when many things, I mean this teapot, when many things go wrong. It's interesting because teapot is some very classic model for if anybody of you uh, plays with computer graphics, you know that teapot is the best object that you can create by hand and you can use with different rendering techniques. It's mostly historically, and I'm, I'm joking a little bit, but in the case of 3D scanning, the teapot is the absolutely worst object because usually it's very shiny, so it generates a lot of 
Uh, I'm not sure, it, yes, it's visible. It generates a lot of errors or, or artifacts over the surface. Also, if it has dark parts or the dark and shiny parts, which is, uh, is absolutely the worst uh, case, that it will usually uh, generate artifacts that needs to be corrected or this element of teapot probably should, uh, should be simply hand modeled. Of course, uh, the thing I mentioned, if you would cover the black uh, hand of the teapot with, let's say, some powder, or in the kitchen even with some wheat, to make it more, less shiny and brighter, then it, then it would probably uh, be scanned properly, and then we would probably use some shader into the game engine or into the computer program to, uh, to make it shiny and, and to give it proper real-time or, or interactive specular. But, just rough scan uh, looks like this. The same is with a very complex uh, organic shapes, because I meant organic shapes are generally okay, yes, but if they are not too complex, the foliage and the plants are usually not good for scanning, mostly because of complexity of the models. This way or another, it is possible to scan each leaf of this plant, but to scan the whole plant and have uh, every leaf uh, looking proper, we would need to spend a lot, a lot of time. So for foliage and for the plants, it's usually better to, for example, scan just some base of the plant, like, like the tree base, and then add the foliage, uh, add, add the leaves uh, as, the, as, as the part of the foliage system, because there would be not, not only complicated scanning scenario, but also there would be so many data to process, uh, and it would be very hard to animate or use any post-processing effects on, on this kind of object. And with, with 3D scanning comes the, the important question of lightning flexibility. Because basically, when you scan, you are acquiring the model, very detailed model, which is good. You are acquiring very detailed textures, which is usually good. But you are also acquiring the light, which is usually not good. Because most of the real-time application uh, wants to operate with dynamic lights and wants to use different lighting scenarios to make the scenes interactive or to uh, give them proper mood or proper look and feel. So, part of the, uh, answering this uh, issue is uh, what I mentioned before, scan with as many ambient lights to avoid any specific, uh, to avoid any specific shadowing, to avoid any, uh, any lightning uh, interaction with the surface. But on the other side, uh, there is a couple of processing routines that we are using to simply remove the, la uh, the effects of lighting, like removing the speculars, or like removing the shadows. And uh, if, if you just spend uh, good time on pre-production, like in preparing the scene for scanning and knowing what you can scan and how to scan to avoid this problem, this is not so huge problem. So we did a lot of experiments uh, with different kinds of objects, uh, which, which this figurine is scanned fully and we are applying for it a different uh, uh, different lighting scenarios and it's working perfectly. We also try to light all scenarios that has been scanned in day to turn them into the night location with uh, operation with by post-processing of the scans and also by screen post-processing. So basically it's possible it just adds some, uh, add some additional work to, uh, to your pipeline. The scanning itself, like process of creating the tiled model, is much faster uh, comparing to the traditional techniques. So with scan, you are get, getting a detailed model very quickly. You are getting te uh, detailed textures also very quickly. But uh, with light, you need to spend a little bit more time if you want to have it dynamic. Because sometimes, like for example, in this, in this case, we simply assume that this, this room has to be light looking like this. So we don't really need to change it lighting. And there is not so many games that dynamically, I mean, on the eyes of the player, changes the lighting situation. Of course, there is some, but most of the games puts you into the location at proper time and proper uh, time of the day. So you simply get, get it looking like this, or you can scan it at the different, uh, at the different lighting situation by adding some artificial light or by waiting until for sunset or waiting for, for, for the evening or, or whatever. So uh, important things about scanning is optimization. Actually, this, uh, uh, this all usage of 3D scans into the game is all about optimization because as I mentioned, scanning 
basically are the techniques that has been used for many years now, but the optimization, the process that turns the very, very heavy clothes of points and of textures into the game itself is actually tricky, especially when it came to, into the animated models. Uh, of course, it's me. I wanted to show you this is not, not fake. We are already using scans, uh, not photos. But, but basically, this model, uh, this model require a little bit more attention that uh, like model of head or model of human require a little bit more attention because it has to be usually it has to be animated for example with facial animation or with skeleton animation so the meshes have to uh, to be uh, shaped carefully they have to uh, to be propo uh, properly top, uh, set, set with the topology and it requires time, it requires routines. And the most tricky part about all this scanning is actually this part, the optimization, the effective way of turning the gigabytes of texture data, gigabytes of cloned point data into the uh, models that are scalable with amount of polygons, that are scalable with uh, texture density, and so on. And we are using different routines for this because depending on, uh, depending on, uh, what kind of object it is. For environment objects, it will be a little bit different. For, for uh, character objects, it will be a little bit different because they have, dec they have different requirements inside the in-game engine. For, for the environment object, right now we have quite, quite dense uh, mesh. Actually, this, dense is, uh, this mesh is processed with LOD system. I mean, here you got some detailed meshes. But, but of course, in the game, we are using also less detailed meshes that are being switched uh, depending on, on the distance and a couple, couple of other algorithms. And uh, for processing the meshes, we are using uh, different software like ZBrush, Maya, 3D Code, uh, Photoscan, and a couple of others in different combinations. We, we got not one pipeline for generalized uh, scan processing. We got, we got pipeline for processing different types of objects and different types of data. But uh, the more tricky part comes with, uh, when we look over the texture. Because actually meshes, this way or another, are simply elements of, uh, of 3D, uh, let's say, points that are, be, that are easy to manage. But to get the proper look and proper texture density and proper photorize, we need to use very, very detailed textures. The amount of textures per uh, typical location in our game is something like, like two gigabytes or three gigabytes or even more. So it's not possible to put all the texture data inside the, inside the video memory, uh, video card memory. So we need to use different streaming texture techniques to, to operate on, on, on textures to dynamically load and unload them. Uh, this is something what most of the engine have issues with because uh, uh, famous texture popping in most of the games of previous generation, especially games made on Unreal that we have been also working in, is, is effect of not so very well routines of texture streaming. So at this moment we are utilizing uh, the technology uh, created by the guys from the Graphene. Uh, it, it's called Granite and it allows us to dynamic, dynamically load and unload any amount of textures in the real time, depending on what part of the scene we are looking at, we are loading with, let's say, per pixel precision what we exactly need to show, uh, show to the player. And then the amount of texture used by the one location or by the one level is not a problem. We can use as many of them uh, as we want. And uh, the guy of uh, Alyosha from the Graphene is here. If you are interested uh, in this technology, you can, uh, you can uh, ask him some questions. And moving further, uh, the 3D scanning brings, brings some more uh, problems or some more issues that are not being met uh, in classic scenarios like, like in hand modeling. You need to do a lot of preparation, a lot of pre-production before you even start to scan because you need to find a proper location on proper object. You need to secure the right or permission to scan it, but it's sometimes not easy especially if you are scanning these abandoned, ruined buildings where nobody wants to take responsibility that you will, let's say, fall off from, from some broken cellar and, and, and break your neck. 
So there is a lot of issues with handling, uh, with handling this. You need to plan uh, it, including even the weather condition. So sometimes the weather can prevent you from entering the, the location and, and, and making the uh, proper scans. And there is also a lot of hardware that, that may be needed uh, besides of typical uh, scanning equipment. Like, like here we, we are example of scanning drones that we have been using for scanning the big buildings in, uh, close to the Grivice. Because this is the case where, where we would not be able to, to reach the top of this building uh, on our feet. As you see, this building is very tall, it's very massive, and it simply is in, in, in the condition where entering this building would be very risky. So we just needed exterior of this building, so we used the scan drone uh, with a very sophisticated uh, camera stabilizer connected to it. Uh, to, to gather the scanning data and to bring, uh, to bring this model, model into the game. So, so in the end, if there is still a minute for, for the question session, I will just show you a little bit of it. So this is also what you need to be ready to do when, uh, when attempting to scan, like uh, going into the mood, up to your belt, uh, fighting with the dogs, fighting with the security uh, of, of, of these places and, and, and risking your life. And uh, this is basically what I have to, to tell you. If there are any questions, I, I guess we still have a minute to, to, to answer them. Okay, a question? Yeah, okay. Uh, well, what you are doing, what, what you are doing here with uh, with all this 3D scanning technology, is quite novel in uh, in uh, game development. So, are you pl when you finish Get Even, are you planning uh, to uh, releasing I don't know some white paper or something about this? Because it's it will certainly you will build up a vast amount of knowledge uh, during during uh, developing this game. Yes, basically we got nothing against sharing the knowledge because most of what we are doing here is not mystery. It's just that it's so experimental still. I mean, we are doing a lot of stuff and we are putting it into the game, but it is still so experimental that we are still trying to find the proper solution for different scenarios and different cases and it's simply it's not finally ready to, 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 to tell everything to the public because from, from month to month, we are finding a new ways and we, we are altering our pipelines regarding the processing of the scan. Because the scanning itself, you can find a lot of materials around the internet, a lot of presentation, uh, and, and, and this is the common knowledge. It's actually easy to get to know how to scan something. It's hard to get to know how to process the scanning into something which can be called very massive application, which can be called virtual reality application, uh, which utilize the scan, and this is something what we'll be constantly sharing, uh, sharing with you, depending on our progress. Any more okay. question? Okay, so there's no question. Thank you very much for your time.